Hey guys, thanks as always for checking out the channel. Remember to hit that subscribe button or else you might miss chats with the stars of, I don't know, the hottest show on television, like Bella Ramsey. Bella, don't you think that's yeah. a good idea? I feel like they're doing themselves. I think you should hit subscribe. Yeah? Yeah, you're doing yourself a favor like you were going to say. Yeah, like, I mean, we're trying, we're doing a service to the audience. We're trying to help people here. Yeah, exactly. That's our only aim is to help, is, is to help and provide. <laughs> exactly. Uh, please enjoy my chat with uh, Bella Ramsey, star of The Last of Us. Bella, this is uh, really exciting for me. This is um, this is one of those shows. This is like my current obsession right now. Um, cool. And I hope you're feeling the love out there. There's a lot of uh, excitement about this series. Yeah, there's been a lot of love, which is um, un sort of unprecedented, which is a word that I haven't heard you since the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, so it's sort of weird to bring it back. But um, but yeah, it's been a, I think we all hoped the show would go well and that people would like it, but we didn't quite anticipate that, that the reaction would be like this this big and this good. Yeah, you hope you, you go in with the best of intentions, but as you well know, part of it is that a lot of it's out of your control. Um, right. yeah. And as we tape this today, uh, big news. I mean, we saw this coming. We knew this was going to happen, but officially- yeah. The Last of Us is coming back for season two. Is it relief, excitement when you, did you just hear the news today as well, or did you get a tip? I'm, no, I heard the news earlier this week, um, but I'm I'm so happy. Um, I, yeah, I sort of anticipated it. Well, I did anticipate, I didn't sort of anticipate, I did anticipate it, but it's, it's really <laughs> nice to, to have it solidified and like just to know now that it feels more real, like to know that I'm going out to Canada again and spending time with some of my best friends making the show that I really love. And, and I, yeah, I'm so excited for it. So um, before we get to The Last of Us, I, when I started to do my uh, copious research on you, I was like, okay, I wonder if she's done podcasts. And I did a podcast search. And here's I came up with not only, I didn't really come up with you on podcasts, but I did come up with the fact that you were kind of sort of hosting a podcast that never happened. What was- Oh, no. What was not Bella Ramsey? There is a trailer, <laughs> Bella, for a podcast at the end of 2019 and no evidence of it actually ever happening. Not Bella Ramsey was a bad idea that I had when I was, <laughs> I think it was during, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when this was. <laughs> it was I, I will tell you, November 9th, 2019, there is a trailer. And in the the irony oh, of the yeah. description is, I think you say even in the trailer, this is a podcast dedicated to people like me who are indecisive. So is this the ultimate indecisive podcast that you weren't able to follow through on? Like you lived yeah. up to the the title. Well, I've, I've tried to get that taken down. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I um, <laughs> this was just a bad idea that I had. I was like, oh, I can make a podcast and just talk about random things. So I made that. I was wait. I've been waiting for the moment where someone would like find it and, and ask me about it you've done it you, <laughs> you're the guy yeah um not better yeah not better Ramsey. i was just because i don't, i'm not a pod i don't I'm not really a, a listener a, a consumer of podcasts particularly um and so i thought i and that's mostly because like i go on the podcast like charts and i'm like i have no idea what i want to watch to what, what i want to listen to so i was like yeah. uh let me just make one for people like me who don't know what they want to listen to I don't know. It was a terrible idea, and I never did anything other than the trailer. And I, yeah, that's amazing. I watch this shoot up the charts now. It's yeah, cool. exactly. You're this only the trailer. Just leave it there and make it mysterious. I, yeah. I did. I did hear like a stat. There's some kind of crazy stat out there where like ninety. You're you're not alone. Like ninety percent of podcasts like never go past like episode three. Like every like a lot of people are like, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna try it out, and then they're like, oh, this is fucking more work. Like, why am I doing? No, I'm yeah. good. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay. pleased to be, I'm pleased to be part of that statistic. <laughs> you st yeah. You've stuck with acting, thankfully. Thankfully, we're all of yeah, us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about like what it's been like the last few weeks. So as we tape this, um, by the time people watch or listen to this, uh, the first three episodes will have been out. Um, and so far, people are really receiving it very well, and they're interacting with it. It's kind of become appointment, television, streaming, whatever we call it nowadays. Um, like, are you actively engaging with the reception? Or like, how are you kind of receiving it right now? I have an oath with Craig Mazin, the writer showrunner of the show, uh, that we, an oath to, to not look at comments. Um, because it's very easy, like, although the majority of the reaction is great, but even like the, the, the great stuff, it can be, it could become quite overwhelming 
when it's just it's just like a lot of attention yeah um but also um you can there, there's still there's always going to be negative stuff like that and it's easy to fall down that rabbit hole it's just better we just like have a happier time <laughs> when we're just not spending all day like on reddit posts and like falling down those rabbit holes and stuff so so yeah we haven't we have an oath not to really uh, look at too much sometimes we give each other like exceptions and, and that's going quite well i think it's we, a smart we did it, just have to, yeah, go ahead. yeah i think so too we did just have to revise the oath the other day because we both sort of fell down so we now have the, the oath number two fresh edition i, I like um, how it's, it's not like a like a a simple promise or whatever like oh we talked to each other about it it's an oath it sounds like it was like it done in secret done in the dark with candles lit like what happened yeah do you want to actually know how it happened we were uh we just actually yes okay so we just flown to into la we'd had like a 16 hour travel day or something from london this was in this was on the 30th of december and it was in the car on the way to like um on the way to where we were staying and i was like uh, like jet lagged exhausted and um and the oath was born out of exhaustion and, and you know i think it i think it really serves us both <laughs> I, I think it is wise because yeah i mean look even in in the limited experience i've had with that kind of thing you 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 read the comments and you're like oh there are 10 great comments in a row and you just you're stupid enough to keep going until you find the one crappy one and then that ruins your day so it's not worth the psychic yeah, like, energy yeah totally and even if you don't think it ruins your day you're like, oh, this is fine. It's just one bad comment. But then, like, you'll think about it all day. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about how this this one came about. Because I believe you were cast in this about two years ago. And it's a long production. Um, what was the audition process like? Because we're back into, like, look, obviously, we're still living with COVID. But two years ago, that was even more intense COVID times. Did you ever, like, get in an actual room with Craig? Or was it all Zoom? What happened? It was all Zoom, so I had a, a they sent a self tape over, um. So I just did a couple of scenes from the from the first episode, the, the Marlene scene and the one in Joel's apartment, um. And I said eight T's, eight T's means trouble because like my American accent was a bit dodgy, um. But they could see that see past that thankfully, and um after that I just got on a Zoom with Craig and Neil and um uh, our casting director and from there like got a got a call then from my agent a few weeks later being like it's it's happening and then and then got on zoom again um with craig and, and neil and the gang to to sort of talk about it. it was very exciting and very surreal so i i read something that neil said neil said quote we were looking for a specific combination of contradictions someone that could be funny and quirky and violent and rough so <laughs> so does that is that uh dovetail with your skill set would you say you have all of those on, in your toolkit I mean, apparently so, and I think, um, I mean, the contradiction thing is is cool because the amount of times I've thought in my life, I'm, I think Anne Frank maybe said this, like I'm a, a bundle of contradictions, or something, and I I felt like that so often. So it was it's it's cool to play somebody, um, like that. Yeah, she's at one point she's like that she's the smartest adult in the room, and then she's like a terrified little kid and i think that contrast is really cool to play um yeah i i mean i i i relate to all of the things apart from violent sure. but you know i think i <laughs> maybe have some like deep embedded violence that can come out in safe spaces like on set okay okay well how's that manifest is there a specific uh example you want to cite like pounding no. on craft service if they don't have what you want, like what happens? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I think I think we should leave it at that. Okay, yeah, let's leave it mysterious. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I love so, that. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, I've visited a few sets. It's like I, it's a miracle that, yeah, I, I that I don't gain a hundred pounds every time I visit a set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, easily done. All of this is for me. What? Um. So so Craig has famously said that. Uh, he asked you and Pedro not to play the game. Oh yeah. <laughs> so did I I find it difficult to believe in all these months leading up to it, the months of production, there's not late one night, you're in your hotel room and you're like, you know what? He'll never know. I gotta just try it. It would be I it's it never happened. You haven't played the game still? 
I actually started playing it like two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> right, right, but I yeah. had um, I, I had watched some of the gameplay. Like even before right. he they asked me not to play it. Like be- before the audition and stuff, I watched some of the gameplay. So I was aware of it and familiar with it, but I'd never actually sat down and like been Joel and Ellie. Um, so what's yeah, the sensation I- been like recently playing it? Is it surreal? Are you <laughs> how do you relate to playing your own character? It's um I've not got to the bit where Ellie comes in. I haven't really done it for like a week, but yeah. um, it's uh it's actually it's actually not as weird as I thought it would be. And I have it on like the easiest mode, so I, it's fine. But I do find myself like I I think I need to just get on with it <laughs> because I like I get in a room and I look at all the details. I'm like, oh, there might be something relevant here, and I'm just like wandering around and then I end up getting lost because I'd forgotten where like the entrance and the exits are because I've like got so confused walking around in circles looking at all the details of the room and yeah I think I just need to like go forwards and get to the point well it it is this interesting thing and look it's you obviously a lot of folks came to know you through Game of Thrones and the thing one of the things that that is a comparable in these both of these circumstances is that the fan base will know in some ways this world better than the actors at least at the start which is a strange place to be where like you encounter fans that like know every single thing about these games and you're like you're working all of the scripts you're you're working with the material so is that a i don't know is it an odd thing to know like you you must feel ownership over the character but they also feel a a different kind of ownership right and i totally get that with like the 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 ownership that is is felt and but although I think I like I prefer the um perspective of like n- nobody like owns any right. anybody it's just like Ellie is a character that has been like um I I have like hugged <laughs> in my in my brain maybe like embrace it's been like Ellie's been embraced by a lot of people like embraced by Ashley Johnson and then people have embraced Ashley Johnson's like iconic version of Ellie and then now thankfully people like are embracing my version of Ellie as well as like their own personal relationships to Ellie like I, I just feel like it's it's more of like a, <laughs> a collective embrace yeah, <laughs> rather than yeah. ownership I think it's a nice way of, of looking at it and I think it's it's it takes away any sort of toxicity that, that comes with like feeling like a character is, is yours and yes. like yeah they you have they are yours in that you have the you have an an individual relationship with that character that is different from everybody else but like it's the same character you're just all experiencing her and, and them like a, a different way and I think that's that's it's like a beautiful thing I think for everyone to be able to like have their own personal experience yeah I, I wonder if like centuries ago there were like the diehard Shakespeare fans that were like no this is my Hamlet you shouldn't be doing it that way I had this Hamlet in my brain it was this yeah, way probably <laughs> if Reddit had existed back in the days of Shakespeare oh my gosh yeah I, I was gonna say some like Shakespeare shit but I, I, I'm not eloquent enough <laughs> <laughs> the term Shakespeare shit though should be a hashtag um, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Shakespeare shit yeah nice This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I don't know about you guys, but when I feel at my best, that's when I can really achieve and accomplish great things. And I know life can be hard. Sometimes I feel bogged down. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I'm not showing up in the way that I really want to for work and for friends and for family. And that's where something like BetterHelp can help because working with a therapist can help get you closer to the best version of you. Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. And I know it can be overwhelming at times and it's not a bad thing to get some help. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, it's flexible, it's affordable, and it's entirely online. You just have to fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It's all there right for you right now. Help is available. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com HSC today to get 10% off your first month. That's that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash H-S-C. Let's talk about Pedro, the most charming, annoyingly sweet man on the planet. Yes. This is a beautiful love affair that you guys have. I saw you do a lot of press together, and why wouldn't you? It's a fun, yeah. fun group. Um, did you guys, how has the relationship evolved? You had a lot of time with him. 
How was it day one versus where you are? Was there a time that it took to kind of like key into each other's vibe or, or what? Yeah. I mean, when I think of day one and I think of now, like I am, it's a total difference um, in, in a really nice way. Like at the beginning, we were so shy of each other and um, we were so ne- I think we we're just so nervous of like, we knew that we had to spend the, a year together and possibly more for like further seasons and there was so much riding on like our relationship and our chemistry that I think we would just I was certainly like just nervous like I just wanted us to be friends and I was so concerned with like being like <laughs> I don't know not being annoying that um <laughs> that I think it it took a while for us both to like get into just get into the like I don't know just be ourselves around each other sure. and I think at the minute that we did that and just let go of any sort of the sort of pressure and expectations that we had of ourselves and each and each other in terms of how we relate to each other like it just our relationship flourished and like we're so, um we're incredibly comfortable with each other now but the thing that I had immediately with him was like a feeling of safety like yeah. I knew that I was going to be okay and that we were going to be okay um because he yeah it's just an immediate safety and familiarity and um yeah, we instantly got along. I think it just, it took the time, sort of like Ellie and Joel, um, sure. to just, to really like relate to each other, I guess, in a way, in a way that is, yeah, like you said, it is a love affair. It do, really you, is. do you relate to each other on a pop culture level? Because Pedro, like myself, is a very old man. Um, <laughs> do Who has taught more about pop culture? Have you taught Pedro more about contemporary pop culture? Has he taught you more about what the 90s were like? He's, I mean, he's been trying to educate me on like TV and movies that he loves. And I've not been a very good student, I have to say. I just sort of like nod and say that I'll watch all these things that he wants me to watch. And then I just forget <laughs> and never get around to it. But um, I have some things which I definitely will watch. Like we're going to watch Thelma and Louise at some point together, which will be fun. Um, but I, I've taught, I don't, I don't know what I've, what I've taught him, to be honest. I don't really know what I taught him to be honest. Like Horrid Henry, maybe I introduced him to that, which was I don't know whether you know about Horrid Henry. I don't. Oh my gosh, I grew up on that show and continue to. Like I had a whole phase shooting The Last of Us where I remembered about it and then like watched it religiously for a week or so. What's the What's the thumbnail description? What's the elevator pitch on the? Oh, it's it's um, <laughs> well, there's Horrid Henry. He has a brother called Perfect Peter. Who, and their enemies and I don't know he just like gets into trouble and doesn't like brushing his teeth and going to school oh. and I wanted to be Horrid Henry when I was a kid and um, amazing that's that he has, he has a gerbil mouse thing I don't know it was, it's just the greatest if you you have to you have to watch it and listen to this to the theme tune because the theme tune is a real banger what would you like to uh, recite it for me would you like to give me like, a little taste absolutely not <laughs> I mean I could like uh well, I think yes, there are two, and I've got two in my head, and I'm 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 afraid that I won't do it justice. Fair enough. Okay, second podcast, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get you on board for that one. Who do you? Yeah. Okay, so so Pedro obviously has cornered the market on protecting uh, beloved characters. Who do you think he loves more, you or Grogu? Oh, that's a difficult one. Yeah, I think. Oh goodness, to, is it bad that I haven't seen the Mandalorian? No, it's, I mean, it's a little surprising, but it's okay. You're busy. I think, I think it's bad. I I mean, so I from from an uneducated point of view, I'm completely ignorant to, to his relationship with Grogu. I know it's special. And I know that in, 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 he, he, he likes to see his baby grow and flourish and be, become more famous than him. As, than, I really have seen too many of his interviews. But... Um, <laughs> I think I well, see. You see how I'm like dodging around this question because I'm because you're of just it. making stuff up because you you don't want to say the wrong thing. So yeah, you, exactly. you should embrace yourself, embrace the character. He he loves Ellie think, and you more, of course. I think he loves. I think he does because well, I can't really. I mean, oh, watch out for the end of the season. You really see like the love between Ellie and Joel grow, and I think I think he yeah I think he loves me more than Grogu. Grogu. That's how you say it, right? Grogu. You got that right, right at least. Yeah, you got the pronunciation. 
yeah, good. Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda Grogu. Why why are there two names? Well, because technically it's not Baby Yoda. Yoda is its own character. I mean, if you really want to spend the next half hour for me describing Star Wars to you, I can, but I don't think we want to do that. Okay, okay. okay. I'll just watch it after after this. Fair enough, fair enough. I've got to watch Horrible H- Harry. Horrid Henry. Hor- <laughs> that, was, that was close. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're close. <laughs> Horrible Harry is the knockoff. It's a different Horrible thing Harry. entirely. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I have watched the first four episodes. I'm not going to talk about episode four because people haven't had a chance to see it. But by the time people listen and watch this, episode three is out. Bella, episode three is an all-time episode of television. Not just this show. It's I've watched it twice, and I don't have time to watch anything twice. I'm obsessed with it. Um wow. Have you have you watched the finished product? I mean, this is a special one. I haven't. I'm watching it as it comes out. Um, I, but I'm terrified for all the feelings I'm going to feel because I've heard phenomenal things and I've seen clips and oh my goodness, I think I'm going to be broken. And I've yeah. read this. Like, I know what happens and I still think I'm going to be broken. Um, but yeah, I'm watching it as it comes out. So so let's see. Oof. Yeah, I mean, so so for those that do or don't know part of this episode depicts this, it's almost a little bit of a bottle episode as they call it in, in some respects where it depicts this beautiful, heartbreaking relationship played by Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett, two great actors. And look, I mean, I think it's gonna be a special episode for many reasons. And we've seen many great depictions, obviously of LGBTQ relationships in TV. It's that it's not like the novelty of that, but I think it still should be acknowledged that that aspect of it being depicted in such a humanistic, heartbreaking way is a is an important thing to acknowledge. I mean, wouldn't you say that normalizing that in the context of a show like this? I totally agree. Like, why shouldn't why shouldn't we hone in on on that relationship in in a post like apocalyptic world? Like, it's not like all the gay people got blown up and it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. so I think it's I think it's really important and and and. But I I just like the fact that like from reading the script, obviously I've not seen it yet. But yep. it, it it it's a it's 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 a relationship, and it happens be, to be between two men, and and that love story is is so beautiful and heartbreaking. And um, I mean it it's so important. I think yeah, like you said, just like normalizing um gay relationships, LGBTQ plus relationships um in with with all the various back drops like be it be it the apocalypse be it like 2023 like it, it i don't know i i think it's i think it's just really really nice that people can and important that people can feel represented at, and and the hope is that it, it is it impacts um people who aren't in the community just as much as it impacts right the people who are it, it is ellie's queerness important to you like as an aspect of that character i mean it is thus far it's referenced without not being overt yet i don't know if it becomes more into the fore as the season progresses or not um yeah i mean you you will see there's an episode um which focuses a lot on on ellie and and riley her her best friend and and more than that and uh yeah her ellie's queerness is important like she's it's it was something that i i really loved about uh, from the beginning and, and and I loved the way that it was woven into the story again without it being a big deal and like it's not talked to it's not really talked about it just exists and, and that's the, that's what I I really love about it the most but yeah it's just, it's a super important aspect I feel I, I'm just so happy it's um I got to play her and because I, I know she means so much to like so many people and so it's it's an honor for me to, to embody that well, and also the reverberations of something like that aren't just like in the tomorrow. It's it's for it's honestly it is like the more these kinds of roles and normalizing these relationships happen in, in every facet of entertainment, the more audiences see themselves, the more it will just for decades to come. The ripple effect is is yeah. is important is important, I think, to think about. Yeah. It's so exciting that that is the case. Like yeah. it it's it's so exciting. I can't wait for people to to see that episode and, and to Obviously, the episode three has come out by the time people listen to this, and yeah, I, I'm I'm so happy about it. And like, why, why like, why shouldn't um, queerness and and gay relationships exist within a show like this? Yeah, 
I, I just think it's so it's super cool and like a a a great thing that um Craig and Neil have been so so invested in it and 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 into the idea and and I think yeah I'm I'm really happy with with that. Talk to me a little bit about um, Ashley, Ashley Johnson, who, um, of course, played this character in the game and who is going to be seen in the series in a role that I don't believe has been depicted in the game as Ellie's mother. Um, what was the collaboration like? What was it like to pick her brain or not or just compare notes and and to also just share the this, this, uh, scenes with her? Well, it was, um, yeah, I remember I walked into the projection office and I saw her like picture taped up on the wall being Ellie's mum I was like oh <laughs> this is interesting because <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't been told until I saw it up there and, and I said to Craig and he was like yeah you're not supposed to know that yet um yeah it was surreal actually seeing, seeing meeting Ashley for the first time we we haven't really talked about Ellie much we just sort of have this real strong mutual appreciation and love for each other um like every time we meet it's like I I I love your work so much and we just sort of end up spewing compliments at each other and um yeah she's awesome I again I haven't seen the episode that, that she's in but I um I've seen again clips and she's phenomenal like she's gonna blow people's minds I mean, one of the exciting aspects of getting to do this over two seasons, perhaps more, Craig has said that potentially the second game is more than one season in his brain. Um, but I, I I would imagine one of the exciting and intimidating prospects is to go off and do your own thing and to, you know, add characters, add backstories, expand the universe a bit. Yeah. Is that is that something like, are there, now that you have this investment in this character, are there aspects yeah. of Ellie you want to explore that weren't explored in the game? I mean, I don't know really. I've not really thought about that. Um, I guess it's down to to Craig and Neil as to like what bits they they really pull from the story. I'm I'm really excited to be honest for the Ellie Dina story. Like I've watched a, a cut together. Someone's made like a phenomenal. I don't know how they do it. Like an amazing edit of just like the gameplay. Like Ellie and Dina's love story. So I'm excited to play that out. Um, um, and also like the the, the complexity of her relationship with Joel and how that gets decidedly like m more complex and, and I'm I'm looking forward to that and just yeah like the I think the violence that ensues is um thrilling in a way to to get to to maybe explore that in a in a, like I said like a really safe environment it will be will be cool but I, I am nervous about it too like I'm nervous about um because I, I know what happens in the second game and I'm I'm nervous about being potentially without Pedro for a while. Right. It's going to be really sad. <laughs> right. You all will though presumably be playing closer to your age at least. You don't have to be fourteen in the in. Yeah. Although people still think I'm fourteen. Like I got we were in a restaurant the other day and and someone didn't believe like thought that I was genuinely fourteen, which is great because it, I'm meant to be like that for for Elliot, and it doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, I'll be. 20 probably by the time we shoot that and i'll be playing 19 yeah so um so yeah I, I will be closer to my age but yeah i didn't actually really think about that is is it is it true um you've been working on getting your driver's license or do you have a license by now yes well i failed my first test <laughs> because i pulled out at a roundabout when i wasn't supposed to i was sitting there for like five minutes i was like i need to go but i just got yeah anyway and then i pulled out and then she's the uh, examiner stand on the brakes <laughs> and, <laughs> we'll try this again um, in a few months <laughs> exactly i actually have got a, a test again next week so we'll see I'll, I'll i'll email you and let you know if i passed please, please do just so you know again to make you feel better I'm a 46 year old man that still does not have a driver's license. I never got a license. Okay, so, that does make me feel better. So you have 26 you years had... to beat me. Yeah, thanks. You've never had the roundabout stress. It's real. <laughs> it sounds horrible. It's horrendous. I have to ask you a little bit about Game of Thrones. You were cast in that one, I believe, when you were 11, which is an interesting circumstance because most 11 year olds are not watching Game of Thrones. You must have been right. aware of it, but not consuming it. Did that put you in a weird spot at the time or no? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, I actually hadn't heard of it. Um, but I, yeah, I was 11, so it totally just wasn't in my world. Um, 
yeah I mean, but it's weird to me now because i i didn't feel that young at the time you never do like you feel right. super old and like wise and mature right. and but now i see 11 year olds now and i'm like wow i was really small <laughs> um yeah so i it wasn't really something i was aware of i soon found out about it my older sister um she's considerably older than me and, and she w- had watched it with her friends and was sort of educated us on, on what it was uh, yeah did you so did you read the books eventually at any point did you have any interest or did you just go off scripts and leave it at that far too big. the books are far too big no <laughs> definitely not I'm, Wait, I, I'm noticing a consistency she doesn't play the video games she doesn't read the books <laughs> you, are you even reading the scripts Bella what work are you actually doing yes. here I'm reading the scripts two times over um, <laughs> to make up for the fact that I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to get ripped apart for this. Um, <laughs> the thing is, right, let me try and just, let me try and redeem myself. Okay, make your I've case. Not even read, I've not even read the fourth Harry Potter book, Goblet of Fire, because that's, it's, because, 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 it's very big. I'm like, I, I don't have the, the... Um, patience, I guess, right. for it. I don't know. Uh, I, I just got into graphic novels, which are like way easier to like process. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I haven't read Game. Maybe I will at some point. I also haven't really watched all of the show yet, so I need. To, I've got so many things that I need to do, and not enough time. <laughs> Watch someone the ways with Pedro. Um, wa- yeah. read off Game of Thrones. Watch the Mandalorian. Play The Last of Us Part One and Two. You've got a long a list of to-dos. Um, yeah. One of the odd things about, and I came into Game of Thrones remarkably late myself. Like I I, I came in the last season. I was like, I just got to watch this thing. Everybody's talking about it. And I just like binged it and became obsessed at the end. But like I quickly became up to speed on all the, the clinical controversies around the show. It was a show that as beloved as it was, for some reason seemed to always attract something, whether it was the yeah. ending, they're too dark, the yeah. faithfulness to the books is Khaleesi a positive spin on Khaleesi? It, it just seemed like a lot. Were you again kind of like, did you feel removed from it? Did you feel silly to you? How has that kind of colored your perspective on pop culture and work going forward, going through that madness? I felt sort of completely. I, well, I felt completely removed from it because I, I was really not in it very much. Um, so I didn't the attention. Uh, that that had like on me was very um like isolated right in like so it was uh, and like contained um I th- I wasn't really talked about in when it came to like the show as a whole and and the specifics of it I think the the one controversy that I was slightly a part of was the coffee cup thing <laughs> <laughs> just because I was in those scenes um who was the who was the final culprit on that one who who was it Kit. Yeah. No idea, not a clue. Okay. I I sort of I lost track. <laughs> it's a mystery um, still to be uncovered. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll never know to be honest. I, they should they should have done fingerprint tests. I mean, I guess it was long gone by then. But yeah. Right. Right. One of the great mysteries of life. So I mean, one of the also curious things. Look, we're talking to you now, and you are. Uh, 19 going to be 20. You've been acting since you were like three or something insane like that. Um, And there is this interesting like kind of transition for young actors, kids into adults where like when you're a kid acting, it's a different thing. Wouldn't you agree where it's like you're kind of like there is performance, of course, and there is craft. But a lot of the early stuff is is almost being there and being present and just kind of having a natural charisma and charm and whatever you bring to the table. And it becomes less about that, I would think, as you get older and more about calling upon different skills. I mean, am I am I off there? Does it feel like you're like you have to kind of like develop new skills as you get older and kind of transition from being a kid to an adult actor? So I think actually the, the best adult actors are, are the ones that act in, in, in the way that kids do, which is like off instinct. Well, I guess. I don't know, but I think even like for some uh, like child actors, I hate that phrase. And I hated that when that was like put on me. But um, I think it, yeah, I think really like the less that you can think about it and like the less conscious it is, like the better. 
No, that and, makes sense. It's almost like stripping away all the the artifice and all the stuff to get back to the kid stuff. I, I, what you're saying makes total sense. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like like a childlike innocence around around it, and like a, a childlike curiosity, and it. I think it, it that's what really um, makes it believable. I guess yeah. you just have to. It's about like I guess just be, be, believing and finding the truth in what you're saying and who you're being and um yeah I think like for me it's very much still like an unconscious process and that's terrifying also because I don't know what I do so I'm terrified that one day I'm just just gonna <laughs> not be able the, to the do magic anything. power is gonna go away <laughs> what happens yeah exactly <laughs> but, I mean we'll see but yeah I think for as long as you, you can hold, hold on to just like following your instincts about something um if your instincts are are often correct like the better because then I think you can always tell when someone's overthinking it or or trying to be a certain way rather than just like being i don't know it all sounds so like no like mystical and whatever but i get it yeah yeah Yeah. in the years that you've been acting which is almost your entire life like has it been a consistent thing where you're like you've been certain this was the path like have there been moments or years where you're like this is fun but i should probably think about doing Mm. something something else I mean, I, I I only professionally started when I was eleven, um, but I've been doing yeah, like amateur theatre groups growing up since right. I was three or four years old, just because it was fun. And I, right. my older sister did it, and I I thought she was really cool, and still do, by the way. So I, um, so yeah, I just I just like did it because I loved it. I, I never thought about it as a career, uh, but yeah, I guess since I was eleven, on like from then onwards, I. I think because I didn't know that I wanted to be an actor when it happened, it was such a happy accident. And suddenly I, I felt like things slotted like I, I into place, like I found what I was meant to be doing by accident, sort of. So it was a really surreal sort of experience. And I and I wouldn't trade it. There's not been a moment where I've wanted to do anything else <laughs> other than like in the industry. Even if even if like I do lose the ability to act one day, like I will start on set I will be a runner and then I'll be like a third AD like I will be on set as even like a PA I it's just it's a um it's just a one they're just wonderful places and I I feel so at home on on a set and I think I would as um just being there so yeah just if that, I do, that, that, co- that collegial atmosphere of the collaboration the kind of everyone yeah. for a common good a common cause trying to push a boulder up a hill kind of a thing yeah, exactly, and and the relationships that are formed out sure. of that and are, are so unique. And most of the time, you never talk to the people again that you've spent like a year with because you all get busy, and then like you meet a few years later, and it's it's like meeting an, an old friend that you've known for, like all your life. It's yeah. the coolest thing, and it doesn't. Yeah, I I've not found that anywhere else in my life, so it's really cool. And outside of like you know earlier on we, we were talking about the oath and kind of not reading the message boards and all that kind of thing like it's such a weird industry where it's like it's all based it's it seems at times on judgment and and judgment for and on anyone is tough let alone children <laughs> young adults how, how do you preserve yourself how have you what are the coping mechanisms outside of not reading the message boards that you found work for you um <laughs> great question. Um, I mean, in terms of how far the judgment sort of goes, I've not, I've not experienced much of that. I've been fairly sort of uh, sheltered from that just because I've been in, I've, I guess, yeah, Ellie is the, is the first time that that's happened on a bigger scale. Right. Um, but I think I just, I don't know, like I'm, I, I live in like my little village with people that I've known like adults that I've known my whole life and um I'm still like I think in a way like my um childhood like I'm coming to a lot of things later than uh, like a lot of people my age feel in a way a lot older than me but in certain ways I feel a lot older than them so that's sort of a a, a weird balancing act and I feel like I'm just experiencing outside of like acting and stuff I just sort of get to experience the, no- the normal things that like a 19 year old experiences maybe um just at, like I don't know in, in a different sort of 
way but still very i don't i'm just i'm just chinese you know i don't even know what i'm saying but no um, no it makes sense oh look she hasn't gone hollywood you're not living in beverly hills uh rolling up in your rolls no. royce you're 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 living a no, real exactly. life an authentic life yeah exactly i still i, I live in the same house i've always lived in like i've not i've only changed in in, in ways that like I, like the, you naturally are meant to change from like when you're 11 until you're 19 right um so i and i just like play football locally with like my friends and it's like nothing really has has yeah. changed apart from the fact that now every time I go out I get recognized by at least one person like that's sort of the change but that because that's manageable you just right have a nice selfie and with somebody and then and then it's sort of it's done so I, you I can, feel you can, like you can you can dip into LA or New York when you do the press you get to go to a, a big fancy award show enjoy that silliness for what it's worth as long as it's the perspective that really keeps us <laughs> grounded and sane and it seems like so far so yeah. good i really appreciate the time yeah. bella i look i good luck on a lot of things good luck on watching and reading a thousand books apparently uh passing the driver's test um you got a long to-do list and now we have to add season two of the last of us i'm sorry but you got some work to do i'm really excited about that that doesn't even feel like work <laughs> excellent um thanks for the time today it's been a real pleasure thank you thank you for chatting with me